Uh, understood, Director access. Carvajal, but my time's limited and the buck stops with you, correct? Correct. Okay, and I would suggest leaving the microphone on just in the interest of time. After years and years of documented failures, why would you not be aware of a letter from the chief judge on the Northern District of Georgia citing rats, roaches, emaciation of detainees, lack of access to hygiene products? You wouldn't be aware of that? If it was brought to my attention, Senator, again, Assistant Director. If it was brought Director, to your attention, or did you proactively familiarize yourself with conditions Senator, I believe facilities? I wrote you on March 14th. Did you get my letter? Uh, my office probably. My office got well, I didn't write your office. I wrote you. Did you receive my letter? I have not read your letter. You haven't read my letter. I tried to speak to you Friday or, or, or yesterday. You haven't read my letter. I have. The mail's I, not on time in Georgia. I'm a member of the Committee with, of Jurisdiction. You haven't read my letter. Well, that explains why I haven't received wow. a response to my letter. March 14th, I wrote you with two specific questions. What update can you provide regarding the aforementioned reported issues at the Atlanta Regional Processing and Distribution Center in Palmetto? Question one. Question two, how is USPS currently communicating with customers in the metro Atlanta area reporting delayed and lost packages? You haven't read the letter? So, so letters come in, uh, people put, they put stuff to, to together to answer okay. it and get you, it. Let me, let me just give you uh, just a friendly piece of advice. You should, you should personally read letters mm -hmm. from members of the U.S. Senate Committee right. that funds and oversees your operations, particularly where you are failing abysmally to fulfill your core mission mm -hmm. in my state. Mr. Zuckerberg, I want to begin by just asking a simple question, which is do you want kids to use your platform more or less? Well, we don't want people under the age of 13 using Do you want teenagers platform. 13 and up to use your platform more or less? Um, well, we would like to build a product that is useful and that people want to use I'm, more. I, my time is, is going to be limited, so it's just, uh, do you want them to use it more or less? Teenagers 13 to 17 years old, do you want them using meta products more or less? Well, I'd like them to be useful enough that they want to use them more. You want them to use it more? I think herein we have one of the fundamental challenges. In, in fact, you have a fiduciary obligation, do you not, to try to get kids to use your platform more? It depends on how you define that. All I'm trying to suggest to you, Mr. Zuckerberg, and my, my time is, is running short, is that in order for you to succeed, you and your colleagues here, we have to acknowledge these basic truths. We have to be able to come before the American people, the American public, the people in my state of Georgia, and acknowledge the internet is dangerous, including your platforms. There are predators lurking. There are drugs being sold. There are harms to mental health that are taking a huge toll on kids' quality of life. And yet, you have this incentive, not just you, Mr. Zuckerberg, all of you have an incentive to boost, maximize use, utilization, and engagement. And that is where public policy has to step in to make sure that these platforms are safe for kids. So kids are not dying, so kids are not overdosing, so kids are not cutting themselves or killing themselves because they're spending all day scrolling instead of playing outside. It's self-evident that you have a fiduciary obligation to get your users, including users under 18, to use and engage with your platform more rather than less, correct? Over the long term, but in the near term, we often take a lot of steps, including we, we made a change to show less videos that, that uh, on the platform that reduced amount of time by more than 50 million okay, hours. Okay, but if your shareholders so ask you, Mark, I wouldn't, Mr. Zuckerberg here, but your shareholders might be on a first name basis with you. Mark, are you trying to get kids to use meta products more or less? You'd say more, right? Well, I would say that over the long term, we're trying to create yeah. the most I mean, let, let's look, so the, the 10K you file with the SEC, a few things I want to note, here are some quotes, and this is a, a filing that you sign, correct? Yes. Yeah. Our financial performance has been and will continue to be significantly determined by our success in adding, retaining, and engaging active users. Here's another quote. If our users decrease their level of engagement with our products, our revenue, financial results, and business may be significantly harmed. Here's another quote. We believe that some users, particularly younger users, are aware of and actively engaging with other products and services similar to or as a substitute for ours. It continues, in the event that users increasingly engage with other products and services, we may experience a decline in use and engagement in key demographics or more broadly, in which case our business would likely be harmed. You have an obligation as the chief executive,
to encourage your team to get kids to use your platform more? Senator, Fundamental, I think this is, I, let me, I, I mean, I, is that not self-evident? You have well, a fiduciary Senator, obligation I think it's, I think it's to your not, shareholders to get kids to use your platform more. I, I think that the thing that's not intuitive is the, the direction is to make the products more useful so that way people want to use them more. We don't give our, the teams running the Instagram feed or the Facebook feed a goal to increase the amount of time that people spend. Yeah, but we you don't dispute, and your, and your 10K makes clear you want your users engaging more and using more the platform. And I think this gets to the root of the challenge because it's the overwhelming view of the public, certainly in my home state of Georgia, uh, and we've had some discussions about the underlying science, that this platform is harmful for children. I mean, you are familiar with, and not just your platform, by the way, social media in general. 2023 report from the Surgeon General about the impact of social media on kids' mental health which cited evidence that kids who spend more than three hours a day on social media have double the risk of poor mental health outcomes, including depression and anxiety. Are you familiar with that Surgeon General report in the underlying study? I, I read the report, yes. Do you dispute it? No, but I think it's important to characterize it correctly. I think what he was flagging in the report is that there seems to be a correlation and obviously, the mental health issue is very important. So it's something that needs to be yeah, studied we know, further. Yeah, the thing is, that's, that's, everyone knows there's a correlation. Everyone knows that kids who spend a lot of time, too much time on your platforms are at risk. And it's not just the mental health issues. I mean, let, let me ask you another question. Is your platform safe for kids? I believe it is. But there's a, a difference between correlation let, let and causation. You, you, because we're not going to be able to get anywhere. We, we want to work in a productive, open, honest, and collaborative way with the private sector to pass legislation that will protect Americans, that will protect American children above all, and that will allow businesses to thrive in this country. If we don't start with an open, honest, candid, realistic assessment of the issues, we can't do that. The first point is you want kids to use the platform more. In fact, you have an obligation to. But if you're not willing to acknowledge that it's a dangerous place for children, the internet is a dangerous place for children, not just your platform, isn't it? Isn't the internet a dangerous place for children? I think it can be. Yeah, there's both great things that people can do and there are harms that we need to work to Yeah, aid. it's a dangerous place for children. There are families here who have lost their children. There are families across the country whose children have engaged in self-harm, who have experienced low self-esteem, who have been sold deadly pills on the internet. The internet's a dangerous place for children and your platforms are dangerous places for children. Do you agree? I think that there are harms that we need to just, work to mitigate. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, I think overall Why not? There, why not? Why not just acknowledge it? Why, why do we have to do the, the very well, careful I, I just, coach? I disagree the, with the characterization Which character, that, 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 that the internet's a dangerous place for children? Um, I, I think you're, you're trying to characterize our products as inherently dangerous, and I think that... Inherent or not, you, your, your, your products are places where children can experience harm. They can experience harm to their mental health. They can be sold drugs. They can be preyed upon by predators. They're, you know, they're, they're dangerous places. Mr. DeJoy, core job of the Postal Service is to deliver mail and packages on time, correct? Yes, sir. Are mail and packages being delivered on time in Georgia today? No, sir. Why not? We have had uh, significant issues in terms of transitioning from 11 plants in the Atlanta area into three. Excuse me, could, could you speak into the microphone, yeah. please? We've, we've, we've taken on a big, Atlanta has been one of our worst, uh, the Georgia area has been one of our worst served areas over the last 10 years, uh, mostly because we had uh, t 10, 12 different locations around the Atlanta area. Mr. Drew, I don't want to talk about the last 10 years, I want to talk about the last three months. All right, well, we do, you, do you know, since you made this shift to the new Palmetto facility, mm -hmm. What percent of outbound first-class mail was delivered on time in Atlanta? It's, it's a significantly lower number. Yeah, 66%. Do you know what share of inbound mail, first-class mail, is delivered on time? It's probably all a day late. So. Take, a, take a guess how much of it's on time. 35%. You're, you're pretty much there, 36%. Mm -hmm. 36% mm -hmm. of the mail is being delivered on time to my constituents. What is the specific nature of the operational failure? 
Uh, well, the specific nature they operate, we had to move 2,000 people from all these different plants into one location. We have strict requirements as to when they move. It's a big facility that we opened up. We have inbound transportation issues. Uh, 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 yeah, but you knew it was going to be hard and complicated, right? Yeah, and we tried to phase it in over, se several, over several months, which we did. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to fix it. Uh, you're absolutely when? right. When is it going to be fixed? I, I, you will start seeing service improve. Over, you should see it start now, and I think we'll get to where we need to be in about 60 days. Do you think that one of your private sector competitors would have rolled out yeah, I a think new, they had excuse, hold on a second, Mr. Mm -hmm. Joy, a new system that would reduce on-time delivery to 36% and then say it's going to take months to fix it? Months? Private businesses and ta taking on operations of this nature with the, with the resources that, that we have do, in fact, have these types of problems. You, okay. you, don't, have, you don't have months to fix 36% of the mail being delivered on time. Yes. I've got constituents right. with prescriptions that aren't being delivered. I've got constituents who can't pay their rent and their mortgages. I've got businesses who aren't able to ship products or receive supplies. And let me be clear, I think postal workers are out there every single day working their hearts out to deliver the mail on time. But if they don't have the infrastructure and the management competence overhead them to make a transition like this without drastically impairing the core function of the Postal Service, everyone in my state is losing. You, the amount of distress this is causing my constituents in massive, is massive. And I want to know what you are going to do, what specific steps you are going to take to fix this within two weeks. So we have engaged over 50 different management executives on, on site. We've, we're, we're, we're finishing up our staffing at all the, at the remaining three locations. We are looking at our truck schedules, re revamping our truck schedules. Uh, we are stabilizing the operation in terms of uh, our, our machinery that's, that's, that we have deployed there. We are working better on our, we have special teams down on site on, working on our docks and we're working the rest of the transportation uh, uh, aspects of this that are causing a significant amount of problems. And the two plants where we did a lot of transfers with, by uh, within the next uh, 10 days, we should have them fully staffed. Uh, we had uh, uh, issues in terms of those transfers. So the team is working, yeah. working very hard. And I can assure you that in the long, in the long run, Right, the, you will have the, uh, probably the best service in the country. No, the, the long run is, is too long. You've got weeks, when, not when months. I, you've got say, weeks, not months well, to fix this. And if you don't fix it, 36% on-time delivery, I don't think you're fit for this job. I yield okay. to Senator Butler. As you know, USP Atlanta is a prison complex that holds pretrial detainees, meaning people who have been charged with crimes but not yet convicted. And as you know, in our country, they are presumed innocent. During our investigation, we have uncovered horrific reports of conditions of incarceration for all prisoners at USP Atlanta, but in particular for the presumptively innocent pretrial detainees. What, in brief, Director, does it mean for a detainee in your custody to be presumptively innocent? Senator, I'm not sure I understand your question. What does it mean for a detainee in your custody to be presumptively innocent? Precisely that. That, that they're presumed innocent till proven guilty. They're going through the system. They're pretrial. That's right. They're presumed innocent until proven guilty. A federal judge in the Northern District of Georgia wrote a letter to the warden of USP Atlanta in January of this year, which I entered into the record earlier in this hearing. I think it's an extraordinary letter. This is from January of this year. It cites credible accounts. This is a federal district judge, in fact, the chief judge for the district panel, of the following issues at USP Atlanta, particularly for pretrial detainees who are presumptively innocent. Quotes, Rats in the building, roaches in the food, poor nutrition and emaciation, lack of access to hygiene products, lack of access to medical care, including prescription medication. Quote, a month of 24-hour solitary confinement with only a Bible for entertainment or reading. Quote, a week with only a paper jumpsuit and paper blankets for an inmate on suicide watch without mental health treatment or medication. Have you seen this letter before today? I would have to actually see it uh Senator, I get lots of uh, letters, and I'm sure my staff are familiar with it. But you have not seen this letter until today? No. After years and years of documented failures, why would you not be aware of a letter from the chief judge on the Northern District of Georgia citing 
rats, roaches, emaciation of detainees, lack of access to hygiene products. You wouldn't be aware of that? No one brought that to your attention? Well, Senator, that's ex precisely why I was describing why, how our organization works. We have a regional director that is responsible for oversight of that facility along with the CEO. Thank you, Director Carvajal. You said you took immediate action when these issues were brought to your attention. November 2018, suicide investigation found that staff who initially responded to the medical emergency did not appear to have a sense of urgency. You were the assistant director for correctional programs. August 2019, inspection by the Southeast Regional Office reported missing weapons, significant failures to follow use of force, medical and rape prevention policies, improper or non-use of medical detectors. At that point, you were the assistant director for correctional services. What does it mean to you to hear as the director of Bureau of Prisons a report from your own investigators that staff at this facility lack regard for human life? It's completely unacceptable, Senator. That's precisely why I took the actions that I did when I became aware of it.